Hey, I'm so excited about house churches. And as you know, we're reading through the New Testament and read through the Bible together as a church. There's a lot of synergy there. And we read this past week through the letter to the house church in Colossae. Colossae is a real town, real place. They changed the name Honaz in Turkey, but 30,000 people. It's there. It's mainly Muslim now, but it was a real place that Paul wrote to. And you're going to be amazed today how this relates to us today because the Bible is timeless. And, and you're going to find there's a lot of things in your life that have to be done, done away with and dealt with because positionally you're a believer, but practically there's a lot of things that need to be worked out. So we're going to look at that in Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to skip down to verse 5. He's been talking about how you're a new person, a new creation, you got a new mind, you got the Holy Spirit, you got the body of Christ, the community. And then he says, hey, because of that, put to death, literally murder, therefore whatever belongs to your flesh sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, and idolatry, which is idolatry because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in life you once lived, but now you must get rid of all these things like anger and rage and malice and slander and filthy language from your lips. Don't lie to each other since you've taken off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of the Creator because there is no Greek, there is no Jew, or circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave or free, but in Christ, He is all, and we are one in Him. So that's kind of where we're coming from with the Scriptures, and, and there's three or four things that He's saying, and the first is you, you need to make sure that your actions, realize that your actions are revealing what's happening in your heart. So if you don't know if you're growing or if you don't know if you're moving forward, if you're, if you're really a follower of Christ, Paul is saying, look at your actions because that really tells you what's going on in your heart and where you are with regard to your relationship with the Lord. You know, you can look at things that you should be doing. Like, are you, are you spending time in, in the Word? Are you reading the Bible? Are you praying? Are you in community? And, and those are things that let you know if you're growing. You say, well, I don't have time. But it lets you know your actions show you where you are. And then just in case we've missed it, Paul gives us a list of things that we need to get rid of. And, and there are things in our flesh. And you're going, wait a minute, I thought when I became a Christian, like that I'm home free. Well, well, well you're, you're, you're home free positionally, but practically there's things you need to work out. Uh, your flesh is still alive. Uh, I was reading about, I'm fascinated with snakes and uh, uh, a magazine and the National Geographic magazine. And it was a story about a guy in June of 2018, he was mowing his yard in Texas. And he saw a rattlesnake. And so he turned the mower off and went over and cut the head off the rattlesnake and went over to pick up the head. And when he did, the snake bit down on his hand and the poison it almost killed him. They had to fly him to a hospital and antivenom. And, and the reality was, even though the snake head had been severed, the snake was dead, it still had uh, s- some life left in it. Like, like there's some tension there. There's some nerve endings. And that's why your flesh is. And Paul says, when you come to know Christ, like you're a new person, but there's still some old stuff you got to deal with. And he says, one of those things is uh, sexual immorality. He says, stop having sex with people you're not married to. You're like, whoa, how did he know? Well, because he's writing a letter to a house church that it's a letter for all house churches to say, when when you have sex outside of marriage, it, it, it's hurting you. You got to put that to death. You got to have some margin. You got to have some guardrails. See, the word for one flesh in the Old Testament is dowd. It literally means the mingling of souls. And when you come together with someone that you're not married to, you're mingling your life with them. It's why it hurts so bad when, when you break up. It's why it hurts so bad when things don't work out because that person is a part of you. And, and so Paul says, put that to death. Make sure that you understand that you can't be having sex with people you're not married to. That's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And stop perverting good things. I love this. It's, it's the word pornea. Well, I was thinking sex, but it's food. You know, so stop making food the priority of your life. I got a challenge with that. I love food. It makes you feel good. But, but, but li- you know, you, you, you don't live to eat. You eat to live. And it could be that way with, with like a glass of wine. With a meal. Oh, is that great? Yeah. But the problem is when you begin to take that and focus your whole life around it, or or whether it's work, whether you're working way too hard or you're not working enough, you're taking something that's good and perverting it. Stop giving into fleshly desires. That means basically stop being so selfish. 
Because when you push to get all that you want, somebody's getting left out. Uh, stop allowing evil desires to take root in your life. It, it's where you, you're, you're thinking about uh, an evil, a nursing an evil inside your heart because somebody's hurt your feelings. Could be at work. Uh, could be with your group. It could be wherever, but where you're going, hey, I'm going to get back at them. I'm going to find a way to do it. He says, put that to death. He says, all of these go back to the root of coveting, where you're wanting more and more and more and more and more. It basically, put on the lens of the gospel where you realize how everything you have is a gift from God. He's going to take care of all your needs. I, I, I love what D.A. Carson says. He basically says, hey, nobody drifts toward holiness. You're not going to just drift toward holiness. It is grace-filled effort that you have to put forward every single day in your relationship with the Lord to grow in these areas, but putting these actions to death. He's not through there. He says, hey, your attitudes, your anger. Anybody angry? Yeah, your wrath, that smoldering anger that's deep down. You're pushing stuff in a closet. Somebody barely touches the closet and boom, it explodes. I mean, he goes all the slander. Where, where you, you you say things about people's character. He's got a whole list there. And then lying, because you got to do something to cover all that up. I'm like, hey, hey, what I really meant was, what I really said, what I really did was, because it's painful to admit when you do these things. Listen, God's given you power. When you came to know Christ, he gave you a brand new heart and mind. He gave you the word. He gave you community. And then he says, hey, Put to death some of these actions. Put to death some of these attitudes. Then he says, put to death some of these assumptions. How did he know? He says, stop judging people. Stop prejudging people. Stop placing value on people because of their race, because of what they wear, uh, because of how much money they have. He says, understand when we come to know Jesus Christ, we are a brand new creation. We are one in the family of God. He says, put that to death. Push that aside. You say, how do you do all that? Well, you do that by accepting who you are in a relationship with Jesus and his church. The fact that, hey, we give into these things. We're in process of putting these things to death. But even when you fall into those things and even when you, you don't have the courage to say no to things, you always have a father, a heavenly father that loves you that you can go to. I love that. You, you see that in, 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 the, in the prodigal son. It's really a loving father that even when you, you don't say no to these things, you've got someone who loves you. Man, the key to saying no, the key to murdering these things, it means when the word they use in, in the New Testament is to murder these things, is going back to worship. When you realize how much you're loved, how much God loves you and wants to do great things in your life. I was somewhere recently and I happened to see someone that I knew a whole lot more about their life than they did. That happens to me a lot because I've been in our community so long. And, and I, was, I was looking at her and I realized this person didn't realize that from, from the beginning of her life when she was born that, that, that her dad had another family. And, and she probably didn't understand that. I'm sure she wondered about, like, how, how could that happen to me? And I wanted so badly to reach across. I saw the strain in her face, the disappointment in her face. I want her so bad to reach across and say, you've got a father that loves you. Listen, when you can think about that every single day, that's what worship is. When you realize you've got a father that loves you, that's got a good plan for you, wants to give you power to put to death things that are killing you, it will give you a brand new courage and brand new grace to live on. God bless you.